Welcome to 2 Timothy 2.15, where the Bible declares to study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be shamed, but rightfully dividing the word of truth. This is 2 Timothy 2.15, with your host, Apostle James H. Williams, the pastor and the founder of the Houses of Prayer, Praise, and Worship. Hear ye him. Praise the Lord. Amen. We welcome everyone to our Sunday morning worship service. We already did praise and worship and testimony service, so you chimed in right in time to go into the Word of God. Not going to be before you long, but I believe this is a prevalent message. After listening to uh, the Sunday school that my wife taught, I know that this message lines up and can be in, again, it works in uh, conjunction with it. So I'm not going to hold you long. We're going to go right into the Word of God. My title today is, excuse my vernacular, ain't nothing like the real thing. Ain't nothing like the real thing. How many of y'all know there's nothing like the real thing? Amen. I know when I was out there doing drugs, we knew the difference between the real thing and the fake thing. We knew the difference. Amen. And this is nothing like experiencing, we talking about the real thing as far as experiencing God. There's nothing like the real thing. But a lot of people don't know when they're experiencing God. They think it's only in the up times that they're experiencing God. They forget that David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Amen? He's the real thing. The real thing will be with you in the valley. The real thing will be with you on the mountaintop. The real thing will be with you even when they had a saying, a, a little poem about the footsteps in the sand. Where a man said, when I was going through hard times, I saw two foot pair of, um, footprints, amen, know that Jesus was walking with me. He said, but when I went through the hardest time, I only saw one uh, set of footprints. And he asked God, where was you? He said, that's when I was carrying you over. Amen. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Well, my subject today is pain. Pain threshold and tolerance level. Pain threshold and tolerance level. I want you to know that, that, that you have a pain threshold. Now, when we pay pain threshold, that means there's a threshold where you can't, you experience so much pain that you feel you can't experience no more. Amen? Sister Hendricks is going to give childbirth. She's going to experience some pain that she feel like she couldn't handle no more. But how many of you know that that's not the extent of your life? God knows what you can handle. Amen. He knows what it takes to bring forth anything. And I want you to know that good things are brought forth in pain. Amen. We heard Sister Reed talk about the pain of possibly losing her job. Amen. They suspended her, thank God, with pay. But her job was threatened. That was a hurtful thing to hear people lie on you and, for, and have nobody in your corner believe in the lie. Threatened that you might lose your job. She's on a special program. If she lost her job, she had to leave the country. Amen. Pain threshold. Amen. While she was on a fast and praying, you would think while she fasted and praying, God be blessing and send all these blessings. No. God wanted to show you that you can handle more than you think. There's a pain threshold. And it is to birth something in you. It's to bring forth something in you. So let's look at pain. Pain, the definition of pain is ache, prick, Sting and even convulsion. You've been in so much pain, you feel like you're having convulsions. The threshold is the ingress or the line. That's that line where you think you can't take no more. Starting point or a point of departure or the beginning. The threshold tells you where the pain starts and where it's going to be at its worst. That's the, the ending. And of course, what's tolerable. What can you, what is supportable? What's endurable? What's bearable? What can you support? And the level, of course, is smooth, an even grade, a roll, a press, a flatten, a plane, or a smoothness. So we see here that God is talking to us today about your pain threshold. What can you tolerate? Amen. We don't know what we can tolerate because just when we want to give up, Amen. God ends up putting us through. Remember they always say, God will never give you more than you can handle or that you can bear. 
But I'm here to tell you that you can bear more than what you think. Are y'all hear me? You can bear more than what you think. And people are not equipping the saints to go through anything to get to anything. Today, I've never seen a day like this before in my life where everybody's an apostle, everybody's a prophet, everybody's a bishop. These kids are 16, 17 years old, talking about their bishops and their apostles. They haven't been through nothing. They haven't been tested. They haven't been tried. They haven't been proven true. There's no one that can speak for them and say, I seen brother or sister so-and-so go through something. I seen the pain that they went through. Amen? That they went through so much pain, I felt bad for them. But I also seen God bring them out. Amen? So we have to go through something. We have to go through some type of pain. Lots of times, see, the devil uses pain. The devil uses pain to break you. The Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God allows the pain to birth you. Amen? To birth you into something. How many of y'all can look back in your life and remember there's some painful situations, but now that you're out of it, you can look back and say, what? Peter and them said, and what Paul said, I'm saying, listen, it was good. David even said it was good that I was afflicted. Yeah. Amen? It was good that I was afflicted. Because if I had not been afflicted, I probably would have done something and lost my life. I would probably done something been more regrettable today. Something I really couldn't um, sustain. Something I really couldn't tolerate. Amen? Again, my, it's important that you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is going to talk to you through it all. Amen? If nothing else, if you don't say nothing else except for I'm with you, amen, I'm with you. That's comforting to know that God is with you. But the pain, I don't like how people preach and teach this pain stuff. They try to make it look like you're not going to feel it. You're going to feel every bit of it. When Sister Reed was going through, she was feeling every bit of it. She was nervous. She was afraid. Amen. She had to press through it. Amen. Amen. You're going to feel it. God never said you're not going to feel it. I remember T.D. Jakes about 9-11, you know, he preached about 9-11, and, you know, he called himself encouraging the people, but never encouraged the people in a lie. And he said he believed that those were believers on that plane, and right before the plane crashed into the building, I believe God took, took them, hasha, you know. Man, God didn't take them people like that. Them people went through. I don't know what he was watching. We was watching it on television. People was burning alive. People was jumping out of windows to their death. Y'all don't hear me. I'm sure some of the people that were saved felt pain. Amen. But I'm going to be teaching probably this Tuesday on the different crowns you get for going through these certain pains. Amen. The Bible says he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. You have to endure something. Amen. And God is the one going to put you through it. We always say we bought with a price. We're not our own. Y'all not hear me. But let me tell you something. The real thing. God is the real thing. And the real thing is going to put you through to make sure you're the real thing. Y'all not hear me. Pain will let you know if you're with God or not with God. Amen. Pain will make you say, I quit, Lord. I don't want to be bothered with you no more. Y'all don't hear me I'm saying. But God designed the pain to take us to our knees. That we might pray through and birth us into a whole nother realm in him. Y'all don't hear me. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long. We thank God for Raymond Davis, Pedro uh, Malalano, Keith Philpott, David Wilson, Tamika Mintz, um, Rhoda, and I can't see this last name, Packer, Parkish. I don't know how to say that last name that he gave me. But we thank y'all for watching. I'm not going to be before you long. But I just want you to know I can look back on my life. And I can see where I went through painful situations. And the painful situation, you know, had to get me in a place where I had to make a decision. Do I continue on with God? Or do I backslide? Do I go out in the world? Amen. I remember when I, when I came back to the Lord, the devil literally talked to me. I had lost everything. I was a correctional officer. They fired me. It was a lie. They set me up, and then I lost everything. My house, everything. I was running from the repo man. I had a brand new car. I was running from the repo man. I went from Virginia to Florida to get away from him, and I got in the prayer line, and I remember the preacher was preaching, and, and he was talking about what I don't remember, and all of a sudden, I heard the devil. 
The devil spoke to me and said, I'll give you back everything you lost if you serve me. I heard him. Clear as day. He said, I'll give it. And I knew it was Satan. I knew it was Satan. And my little crazy self, I looked to God and said, what are you offering? <laughs> I did. I was in so much pain. I had lost so much stuff. People was working roots on me. I had lost so much weight. I was, in, you know, and I just, so I asked God, what are you offering? And the Holy Ghost only spoke to me and said, I love you. That's all he said was I love you. And I felt the love of God and I gave my life to Christ. And when I gave my life to Christ, I had a Paul line experience, which is what we're going to talk about. That's why I'm picking the story about Paul. I literally fell to the ground. I was fighting it. I was sitting there like we just read where it says uh, convulsions. I was convulsing, trying to fight the power of God. And when I fell out, I hit the floor. I didn't even know I hit the floor. It felt like I fell through the floor. Ain't nothing like the real thing. And when I fell through the floor, I saw a bright light. And I heard a voice speaking to me and said, James, it's me. I'm the prick you're kicking up against. Y'all not hear me. And I, I cried like a baby because God gave me a flood of revelation that not only was he saving me, but he was calling me. Somebody say nothing like the real thing. Amen. When I have this church, I'm not trying to get you a religious experience. I'm not trying to get you to jump and shout. I'm trying to get you a relationship with God. And you got to understand that relationship is birthed through pain. Amen. But you got to know when the pains of life come, it is to birth you into some place. When you feel the pains of life, when you need a car and you don't have a car and you got to catch the bus and you got to walk, let me tell you something, I did it. And I caught on to what God was doing. And I used to take that time while I was walking to pray. I would take that time to praise him. I take that time on the bus or the train to study my Bible. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Instead of complaining about my situation. So pain will birth the real thing in you. So I say nothing like the real thing. You'll find me in my text, Acts 26, 12 through 28. Talking about a man named Paul. His name was Saul. Saul was a persecutor of the church. Kill you if you say something about Jesus. 12 verse says, Whereupon I was, as I went to Damascus, with authority and commission from the chief priest. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. Paul was on his way to Damascus, no doubt to have some more Christians committed to death. And on his way, he had an encounter with Jesus. Y'all not hear me. How many of you know it's time to have an encounter with Jesus? When you go through something, it's time to have an encounter. You know, a lot of people don't have an encounter. I hear people talking about, uh, um, I, I used to be a Christian, but now I'm Muslim. I said, you didn't have an encounter. You didn't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because let me tell you something, once you encounter Jesus, the real thing, you, you may backslide, but you can't turn away and serve no other God. There's no other God greater than Jesus. There ain't nothing like the real thing. And Paul was on his way to cause destruction. Y'all not hear me. He was on his way to kill some saints. How many of you know that you was on your way to do something destructive that was going to really be destructive to yourself? Amen. But how many of you know that God will meet you on the way? Amen. I'm talking about the real thing. I love to hear the testimonies where people said I was laying down and God spoke to me. Amen. God showed up. Y'all not hear me. So on his way, he said, I saw a light from heaven and a brightness of the sun shining around about me and them which journeyed with me. Watch this. The 14th verse says, and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speak unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? It is hard to kick against the pricks. Plural, the pricks. No doubt, Paul was having some hard times. Something wasn't going right like he wanted it to go. Jesus was letting him know, it's me. I'm stopping you. I'm stopping you dead in your tracks. On your way to cause destruction because I have a call on your life. One thing I noticed that when I minister to people, 
no matter how bad they are, it seems that God always ended with, you got a call on your life. There is something that God wants to do in your life. There's somewhere he wants to bring you. How many of you know we all got a call on our life? Amen. So the devil knows that you have a call in your life. And from the beginning of time, from the time you birth until you see Jesus, he's going to allow, God's going to allow the enemy to cause you pain. To birth you into that place where he can speak to you. How many of you know without that pain, we wouldn't listen to God? Without that pain, we wouldn't run to God. Without that pain, we wouldn't be thinking about God. When everything was rosy and going good, we, wasn't, we wouldn't press like we press when we in pain. Pain will birth you into the real thing. Amen. That you might hear God. Paul heard God. He heard Jesus. 15 verse says, and I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus who thou persecutest. I'm Jesus who thou persecutest. God will let you know who he is. 16 verse says, but rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. What was the purpose of me going through this? To make thee a minister and a witness both to thee of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto you. Are you hearing me? God called them. God called them. God saved them and God called them. But you got to understand that the story didn't end there. Paul didn't just get up and start preaching. He didn't get up and just start ministering right then. The Bible said he sat at the feet of Gamaliel for some years and he studied under one of the greatest rabbis of the Old Testament. There was no New Testament at the time. Are oh, y'all hearing me? And he immediately had to go through some pain. The Bible talks about that when they heard about his conversion, there was people who didn't believe it. They had to let him down in a basket on a, on a wall Y'all not hear me. Because they, they knew that he was a persecutor of the Christians and they was going to kill him too. Y'all not hear me. So pain births us. Pain births us. Thank you, uh, Ty Dowdy and my daughter in the gospel, Melissa, Melissa, prophetess Melissa. So I'm here to tell you that the pain that you go through is to birth you into something in God. To birth you into ministry. How many of you know it's all about ministry? It's not about you. It's not about us. It's about ministry. The pain that you go through is to give you a testimony and to introduce you to a new level demon. Y'all not hearing me. A new level demon. I'm here to tell you ain't nothing like the real thing. Amen. The sons of Sceva, they didn't have the real thing. They tried to cast out a demon in the name of Paul and them gods and Peter and them gods. And the demon said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, who are you? Because they wasn't introduced to the real thing. And they left out of there wounded and naked. But Peter and Paul and all them, they paid a price for the anointing. Y'all not hear me? You have to pay a price for the anointing. You got to go through some pain. Amen? If you miss and screws the pain, you're back up from God. Y'all not hear me? We forgot you bought with a price. We forgot that we told God, wherever you lead me, I shall follow. Wherever you tell me to go, I'll go. But see, we be around all these farewell preachers that's always preaching all the niceties of the gospel, all this good stuff, and they don't prepare you for the pain. But I'm here to tell you that there's going to be pain. Amen? And God knows your threshold. He knows what you can't take. You don't know what you can take. You can take more than what you think. And God wants to show you you can take more than what you think. Because he's introducing you from a spiritual standpoint. From a spiritual perspective, he's introducing you to a new level of demon. There was a book, He Came to Set the Captives Free, by Dr. Rebecca Brown. If you ever read that book and you've seen the things that she went through, where she was fighting witches and witches was um, uh, astral projection in her house, snatching her by her leg and pulling out the bed on the floor. She was in some serious warfare. I used to read that stuff, and I said, Lord, don't put me through that. I don't need to go through all that. <laughs> Are you hearing me? But she had to go through it, because after that, she was able to tell us how to defeat all those enemies. Amen? It was a painful thing. It was a painful thing. 
See, me, I would have complained. I would have said, God, I don't understand. How you letting these witches beat up on me like this? I thought you was God. I thought you was more powerful than this, right? But God was teaching her. She ended up writing two books, two or three books, three books. Very good books that teach you about warfare. Amen? There's a book inside of some of us because of your pain. Let me tell you something. One thing I like about white people, if they go through any little thing, they write a book about it. One divorce or one heart attack, they write a bestseller. Black folk, we be catching hell from the time we was able to talk and walk. And we ain't wrote one book. We ain't wrote nothing to tell nobody what we went through and how we got through and how we got introduced, especially Christian, into the real thing. Look, ain't nothing like the real thing. The real thing is going to bring you through the pain. But you're going to go through some pain. So after Paul was called, the Bible says this. He continued to instruct him. 17 verses said, Deliver thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Paul said, I, God said, I'm delivering you from the people. Those Sadducees and those Pharisees and from the Gentiles, that way of worship unto whom now I send thee. Now I'm going to send you to them. You was just like them, but I'm going to send you to them to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. 18 verse says, To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Listen, the pain that we went through, the pain that you go through, the pain that you're going through, it's the birth, it's going to introduce you to some other people. While you're in the midst of those people, you're not there to take a photo shoot. Amen? You're there to minister to those people. You're there because they went through some pain. My daughter in the gospel, God has anointed her. She Every time I turn around, she's meeting somebody famous on Facebook. She's posting the pictures. Because she's a prophetess. It's for her to introduce the Lord Jesus to them. To take them to another level. And I noticed that almost everybody she met, they was going through some type of pain themselves. Y'all hear me? While she was in the midst of her own pain, God sent her to somebody else that was hurting. Y'all don't hear me. Because it's not about us. It's so that we can go and get somebody by the hand and say, I know what you're going through because I'm going through. But this is the way you go. Y'all not hear me. But what we do as Christians, we go out and we meet those people and instead of us pulling them, they pull us. Because we miss the screws to pain. Instead of us offering them Jesus and offering them healing, we do what they do. They go take a drink. Well, yeah, I'm hurting too. I'm going to drink like you drink. They smoke reefer. Well, I'm going to smoke reefer like you smoke reefer. Instead of introduce them to the healing power of Jesus Christ. Ain't nothing like the real thing. If you met the real thing, you won't, you won't do that. You introduce people to the real thing that you experience. That's why I'm here trying to give you all an experience. That's why every new person that come here, I take them to the deliverance service. Amen? Ain't nothing like the real thing. Them demons are real. When you hear them demons use your vocal cords and speak through your mouth and tell the plan they had to destroy you, somebody say nothing like the real thing. So Paul, Jesus went on and, and um, instructed him. The 19th verse says, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but show first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works that meet uh, works meet for repentance. How many know the real thing will cause you to repent? The real thing will stop you from doing what you used to do and cause you to do those things in God. Ain't nothing like the real thing. I'm here to tell you, ain't nothing like the real thing. I used to do drugs. Ain't nothing like the real thing. I remember I used to drink and get drunk. I used to get so drunk that before I brush my teeth in the morning, I used to drink tequila. A whole glass, a tall glass of tequila just to get my day started. I was only 20 years old. I was going through so much. And I used to say, tequila is to kill her and drink it. To kill that pain that I was going through. And I remember I was in the service, and he's a superintendent now of Church of God in Christ. 
And he came, he preached, he was a minister at the time. And he came and he preached, and he picked it up in the spirit. He said, how many of y'all remember we used to stand out on the corners and drink all night long, right? And my dumb behind, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, who wants to drink? He said, I hear the Lord saying, drinks on me. Drinks on me. I was like, drinks on you? I'll take that. I got in the prayer line. He laid hands on me. I hit the deck. When I woke up, I was drunk in the spirit. If you've never been drunk in the spirit, it's the weirdest thing. Because you know you haven't drank nothing. I couldn't stand on my feet. I was slobbing at the mouth. I was falling all over the place. Somebody say ain't nothing like the real thing. Y'all not hear me. Ain't nothing like the real thing. People was going off. Hallelujah. Praising God. I was apologizing. I went to the mother and said, I ain't drink nothing, mother. I ain't drink nothing. I really live. And I was falling out. Boom. Falling all over the place. Boom. Couldn't stand up to save my life. Somebody say ain't nothing like the real thing. Y'all don't hear me. God will get you drunk. You don't have to go buy no liquor. God will get you drunk in the spirit. Remember what I always teach. The devil is not a creator. He's a duplicator. Amen? He gets you to drink alcohol in lieu of being drunk in the spirit. Y'all never heard of being drunk in the spirit? You can get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Amen? That's why I push so much getting the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God knows sometimes you need a drink, but you don't need a physical drink. You need that spiritual drink. Amen. You need that drunkenness. You need that, y'all not hearing me. You need that, that spiritual joy instead of that liquid joy. Because there ain't nothing like the real thing. Hallelujah. Amen. So Paul went to all of these regions and preached. 21st verse said, for this cause, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Like Sister Reed said, when you do things for Christ, they're going to try to kill you. They're going to try to kill your dream, try to kill your position, try to kill your joy. Y'all not hear me. But because Paul experienced the real thing, he was able to press on. He was literally able to ignore that and preach the gospel. They locked him up. They whipped him. We need to thank God today. We don't get whipped, not physically. They try to find some other way, some manipulative way. 22nd verse says, Having therefore ordained, uh, obtained help of God, I continued unto this day, witnessing both to small and the great. Paul said, with the help of God, I witnessed to the kings, I witnessed to the prisoners, I witnessed to the slaves. Saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. So he was trying to let the Jews know. He was trying to let the Gentiles know. Old Testament, he was still preaching Old Testament, teaching them that the Old Testament was all about Jesus coming in his day and his time. Amen? See, a lot of people haven't experienced the real thing. They, they, they got good vernacular, they talk church, they know how to act church, but what proves that you've experienced the real thing is when the pain comes. When that pain drives you to your knees instead of out of God. Y'all not hear me. Because you have encountered the real thing. Now Paul ignored all of what he was going through. 23rd verse says that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should raise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. He was reminding them that this was spoken of, that Christ was going to come and he was going to suffer. Now Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ is a deity. I know people say Christ means the anointed one, but it's also a description of his deity, who he is in the Godhead. Amen? He was trying to tell them that y'all murdered the son and of the living, true and God, true and the living God. Even Jesus suffered, and that pain drew him closer to the Father when he was on the cross. Amen? 24 verse says and as he thus spat for uh, him for himself Festus said in a loud voice Festus excuse me said in a loud voice Paul thou art beside thyself much learning do make thee mad how many of you know when you experience the real thing people gonna think you crazy I just told you that I went through 
My first marriage, she was nine months pregnant. We lost everything, had a fire, had no place to live, walking in the streets, holding hands in two feet of snow while snow was falling, and I went and preached on the corner. And they said, that Bible don't draw that boy crazy. But when you encounter the real thing, you know that God is going to show up. Y'all not hear me. You know it is. It don't matter what you're going through. There's nothing like the real thing. 25th verse says this. But he said, I am not mad, most notable Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. I'm not drunk. I'm not mad. The 26th verse says, For the king knoweth of these things, before whom I also speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. Let me tell you something. When you have your faith in God, people try to act like you crazy. They look at that religious nut going on. But they know, they heard, they know about the God. Most of the time they're jealous because they don't have the faith that you have. They're upset because they have not been introduced to the real thing. They're too busy trying to figure out how's this person still going on. And nine times out of ten, it's people who got it better than you have it. They'd be upset. And those are the ones that try to cause you pain. I know on the job that Brother Hendricks and, and Elder Branch is on, I know they're there mocking God. Amen? Some of them driving better cars, living in better houses, and you talking about Jesus, and they think you're crazy. But you've been introduced to the real thing. Somebody say nothing like the real thing. This thing wasn't done in a corner, Paul said. 27 verse says, King Agrippa, believers thou the prophets, I know that thou believest. He told the king, I know you believe. The 28th verse says, and then, uh, then King Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou has persuaded me to be a Christian. What did I tell you? The pain that you go through. The suffering that Paul was going through wasn't about him. It was to get him to that king and get him to convert to true Christianity. But everybody that you talk to is not going to convert. Everybody's not going to convert. Look what King Agrippa said. Almost have thou persuaded me to be a Christian. Almost. That's like being almost pregnant. No such thing. If you are, you're not. Paul tried to introduce him to the real thing. And he turned away. Amen. Matthew 7 and 6. And we out of here. I told you I'm going to be before you long. You have to use wisdom. You have to use discernment. Matthew 7 and 6, Jesus told him, Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again to rend you. Let me tell you something. There's some people that God consider swine. He knows that they're no good. How many of you know there are people that are no good? There are people, let me tell you something. I remember ministering to a guy that was strung out on crack. I had never seen nothing like it before. We cast demons out of him. He received prophecy. He got slayed in the spirit, called himself being saved. And that boy still, he ripped off the church and went out there doing that crack. And he knew his Bible. He knew the verses. You quote one scripture, he knew how to quote a scripture to counteract what you quoted. What they call a jailhouse religion. While he was in there, he had time to do nothing but read the Bible. That's all he did. He never encountered the real thing. And it got so bad, he angered the Holy Ghost. And I remember I spoke to him one day, and I said, I see you about to lose your life. I said, I see somebody cutting your throat from one ear to the other. He ended up leaving the church. Well, we had to chase him out the church because the guy that was letting us use the church building had an apartment upstairs, and he let him stay there and he faked the robbery and the guy stole all of the church equipment and everything and sold it for crack. I was going to wrestle him to the ground and hold him till the police come. He, he dipped out past us. I chased him about a block and a half with my collar on. I wasn't playing with him. So I saw him about maybe three weeks later. I was preaching at a church. Somebody saying nothing like the real thing. I was preaching at a church and people think that I'm hard on people. Because I'm going to say what I see. Amen. 
And I'm ministering to this one young lady, and I said, the devil is going to make you a whore before the summer's out. I said, I promise you, if you don't give your life over to Christ, you're going to be the biggest whore before the summer's out. It was the beginning of the summer. That means she only had two months. And some of the preachers were there that I knew, um, Dr. Paul Richards was there, and he thought I was too hard on the people. He got up and started saying, it. you know, bro, wins a little too hard on people. And, you know, people need to be encouraged and everything. And that same guy that I prophesied to had walked by the door. He must have been standing out there listening. And he walked in. This is in the summertime. And he said, I said, what's going on? I said, you got something to say? He said, yeah. Gave him the mic. He said, I just want to tell you all something. He said, I used to think that that man was too hard on me. And he had a scarf on in the summertime. I wonder why he had a scarf on, a wool scarf. He said, he told me that he seen somebody cutting my ear, my throat from ear to ear. And he told the testimony on how he was out there dealing drugs and he went to get some drugs. And he said somebody was sitting in the back seat of the truck and they took a knife and slid him from ear to ear. He said he fought his way out the truck and climbed up the bridge. It was pouring down rain and he passed out at the top in a puddle of blood. And somebody drove by and saw him laying there and called the police. And he took off the scar the scarf, and he had a scar from one ear to the other where somebody had cut his throat. Somebody say nothing like the real thing. Let me tell you something, ain't nothing like the real thing. The real thing, Jesus, the real thing will tell you. He will warn you. The Bible says warn to come before destruction. He had got to a place where the Lord said, don't even minister to him no more because you don't warn him. All he's going to do is take the, the Bible talks about their swine. Their swine, real pigs, Overseas have tusk. They have these sharp tusk in their mouth. And they bite you and their mouth is real germy. They'll kill you. They'll poison you. All right? And some of them have these little horns and stuff where they'll try to stab you with it. That's what Jesus was like in some people unto. So you, some people you can't help. Some people you can't help. Are y'all hearing me? Because they'll turn around and turn on you. So you have to have some type of discernment. We thank God for... Roy Lane and Leslie Campo for watching. Somebody say nothing like the real thing. Amen. The real thing. I keep trying to stress to people that a lot of these churches, people are not experiencing the real thing because you can't say nothing to them. You see them in their homosexuality and you don't want to say nothing about it. You see them in adultery and fornication and you don't want to say nothing about it. It doesn't mean that you hate somebody. But you're trying to get them introduced to the real thing. When the woman at the well met Jesus, she met the real thing. And he told her, the first thing he did was told her about herself. Told her you have five husbands, and the one you have now is not yours. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Amen? Man, clap your hands and tell God thank you. Amen. That's all I got to say. It's time to experience the real thing. People are going through because they not experienced the real thing. Amen? And, you know, I thank God that I've had mentors that told me the truth. There was times I was going through stuff and they told me the truth. Because God is whipping you because of your disobedience. And I had enough sense to get on my knees and say, Lord, are you whipping me? If you're whipping me, tell me why and show me how, what have I done wrong? A lot of times I already knew I was wrong. But times, there was times I was confused I didn't understand. And the Lord would speak to me and tell me what to do. Amen? That's what happens when you are introduced to the real thing. You're not like the real thing. If you met the real thing, you're not going to turn away from God. Amen? You may leave somebody's church. You may leave somebody's denomination, but you're not going to leave God. Amen? Amen. Let's stand up on our feet and dismiss. Amen. Amen. Father, we give you honor, glory, and praise. We thank you for introducing us to the real thing, salvation through Christ Jesus by faith and by grace through faith. We give you honor, glory, and praise on this morning as we depart from this place but not your presence, Lord. We'll forever be mindful that you are the real thing. And although we be going through something and feeling pain, we know that the pain in our life could not happen unless you allow it. And if you allow any type of pain in our life, it is to birth us into something new, to take us to another level in you, to take us to another depth in the matchless name of Jesus. And we'll be careful to give you honor, glory, and praise, oh God. We thank you for being the real thing in our life above drugs, above our 
bills, above our enemies, above everything in our life that could negatively affect us. You are the real thing that deliver us from all those things. And we'll be careful to give you honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We thank you for tuning in this week to 2 Timothy 2.15. If you would like a copy of today's message or information, please write to the Houses of Prayer, Praise, and Worship at 287 Chippewa Drive, Columbia, South Carolina, 29210. Or visit our website at www.thopaw.org and ask for message by title or number. If you would like prayer, please call 772-626. 6351 or email us at T-H-O-P-P-A-W at A-O-L dot com. So until next time, may God richly bless you. Second Timothy to fit to show that simple we get to God to be a work in me to never be ashamed. I reckon the body and the what a truth this is. Second Timothy to fit things better to show that simple people to God to be a work in never be ashamed. I reckon the body and the what a truth this is. Second Timothy to fit things.